what we at my organization, Interfaith Youth Corps, have developed as a three-part framework for what we call achieving pluralism. And we define pluralism as the positive engagement of diversity. So if diversity is just the fact of difference being in close quarters, including the differences that you don't like, uh, a pluralism is an achievement. It's building some positive community out of that diversity. So there are three parts to pluralism. Number one is respect for identity. The recognition that the person who is pro-life or the person who has very clear uh, um, ideas of sex and sexuality or gender roles, that that person has a right to his or her identity and a right to express that identity and a right to have that identity presented in the broader society through education and uh, uh, public library programs and PBS programs in a relatively respectful way. Right? People have a right to their identity, even if it's something that you don't especially like. Part two is that we ought to be cultivating relationships between people from different backgrounds. And so when you put the notion of respect for identity, including identities that you might disagree with, next to the notion of creating relationships with people, the way that I like to think about that is that the only way to have a diverse democracy is to recognize that we can disagree on some fundamental things while coming together on other fundamental things. So, you know, imagine that people who have a difference on abortion are part of the same PTA at a school. They can still work together on the school play or the school bake sale or the school commencement. That doesn't mean the disagreement on abortion isn't important. It means that that can exist while those people build a relationship on something else. And that notion of relationship leads to a third important dimension, which is this notion of the common good. None of us are, are, are isolated islands, right? That we all live in things that are bigger and broader than us. In cities like Aspen, in states like Colorado, in countries like the United States, and this little planet called Earth, right? And that common good, whether it relates to safe streets or good schools or clean air, there's something in that common good we all have a stake in and that affects us all. So even as we might disagree with a dimension of who somebody else is, how they understand and believe in God, for example, we seek relationships with those folks and we recognize that we are part of communities larger than both of us and we have to find some way of contributing positively to those communities so those communities can have a sense of well-being and in turn nurture our individual well-being. I think that that's something that is essential for each of us as individuals, it's essential for our smaller communities and I think that it's the most important dimension of the promise of our country. United States of America. How do we best put this into practice? I think the way we do this in our daily lives is by making a list of people whose identities and qualities we might have significant disagreement with. Um, perhaps it's a Democrat-Republican thing, perhaps it's a religious difference, perhaps it's a difference in an important social or political issue and to make a proactive, intentional, concerted effort to build a relationship with that person in a way that contributes to the common good. 